Welcome back. We're looking into psychics, astrologers, numerologists, palm readers and the like today. And this is where I want to bring in psychologist Grant Brecht. Grant, can I just ask you, that? let me just tell you, thousands and thousands of people believe in fortune telling, right? What is it about we humans that we want to believe in something out there controlling our lives? I think because uh, we live so much of our life uh, with a fear of it being out of control. We live in the what-if syndrome. What if this happens? What if the future isn't as positive and, and as nice as I'd like it to be? And most psychics at the end of the day will end up saying nice things. So it, it allows us to have a, a positive orientation. We go away feeling, well, life's okay. It's not perhaps as catastrophic as I was uh, thinking it was. And uh, so uh, there's a, a sense of, uh, of relief, a sense of uh, a positive view on life. Is it also comfortable to think that not everything in life is down to us, that there's something out there that... Having <laughs> others to rely on is a useful thing at times because it can get a very uh, heavy trip. And while we don't want to rely on other people all the time, every now and then, hey, someone share the load. Okay, well, Bruce, now what does my palm... What did my palm tell you about my health? Okay, it's a very strong constitution, Trish. <clears throat> the very strong lines here suggest that you've got a very strong constitution. Um, it's also showing a very positive uh, <coughs> pardon me, outcome from, uh, from your current condition, in fact. It's, oh it's looking... <laughs> Didn't have to be a palm reader to it. <laughs> but no, very, very strong and looking, you know, nice long lifeline and uh, no major issues in the health. All right, good. That's nice to know. Let's go to John Clark now. John, over here, you, you claim to be able to pick up major health problems? Absolutely. What sort? Give us some examples. Well, can I first of all just uh, make one correction? Uh, astrology is, is not fortune telling. It's a science. I mean, I want to get that perfectly right. clear. Now, uh, we are not medical, medically trained, mm, obviously, mm. but we can, we can take a chart and we can pick out the weakness in the organs of the body and tell the person which organs are going to malfunction and show them how to do something about that and then recommend that they go to a, a doctor or an alternative practitioner in order to uh, get some uh, medication or some uh, you know, more reliable no, not more reliable. We're very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> oh, wrong word there. But, but, but uh, go Someone to somebody who specialises. Who specialises, yes. All right. Because we are, we are not allowed, really, uh, to, to tell people... To diagnose. This is what you, that's right. All you right. should do it this way. OK, let me go to Jason. Jason, what answer has uh, James and the uh, tarot cards come up with for you? Uh, well, he's confirmed a lot of my doubts and suspicions. Um, he said that um, if I did go ahead and get married, that I would... Um, it would be a good marriage, but I would be happier being free and still finding myself here, which is what I came away from England to do in the beginning. So basically, he's just confirmed my doubts in my mind about being single and still living a lot and having lots of freedom and being happy. And James, any comment on that? You didn't ask her for a date or anything? Well, well <laughs> <laughs> good idea. Um, <laughs> well, what readings do many times is they show the alternatives and the options, and it may not be a clear yes or no. So for her case, the marriage would look okay, but on the other hand, living apart from that would look maybe even better, but it's her, what does she value, and therefore the cards indicate you know who she is and what she Where wants out of her go. life let me come back to uh, you john rachel asked you about her career what did astrology come up with that she has a very strong personality she presents herself very well she would make uh, a, a very good uh, tv compare i'm <laughs> doing what you're doing actually <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is a deep sense of insecurity here that she needs to overcome no, she'd be very good in television <laughs> 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 but she has all the attributes. She's going to be a very successful lady. There isn't oh. any doubt about that. Well, Rachel, I'll get your autograph and I'll also <laughs> ask you, what do you think about that? Do you think John's accurate in his oh, reading? Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, you're not going to say <laughs> you, Is he right about your personality? Um, well, what we've talked about, you know, previous to this, I mean, yeah, a lot of what he said is definitely very accurate, yeah. All right. Mm. All right, let's come back to Grant Brecht. Now, Grant, a recent Herald Solwick poll showed that one third of us trust in the power of the stars to guide our destiny. Now, I personally find that alarming. That doesn't bother you as a psychologist? Not really, Trish, because I think while people uh, are saying, look, I, uh, I, I uh, look to the stars for some guidance, they also are using a lot of their own 
thinking uh, patterns, their own behaviours to get themselves through life. So they're not just relying on the stars to get themselves uh, through the astrology uh, factors. They are going out there running their own lives as well. If they were purely just relying on the uh, astrology charts, then I would be concerned then as a psychologist. That would be worrying. Simon, that leaves a rather hefty responsibility on people like you if that many people are turning to this, you know, psychic uh, things. Are you happy about that? Well, I'd, I'd like to point out that whilst we we're, we're certainly don't have any uh, antagonism towards psychology, in fact, um, uh, only a month ago, a very prominent psychologist came to us at the Psychic Hotline and said, um, and at the end of the reading, I said, well, why did you come, just out of interest? And she said, well, I'd get more out of one session with a psychic than I do with six months in, with a colleague. <laughs> I think we better leave it. <laughs> <laughs> so I should also point out that um, the way w that psychics can help where, where uh, psychologists, uh, you know, we can yeah, work in. Yeah. But a lady rang only last night and said, six months ago, you told me that my child, not me personally, yeah. but one of the psychics on the hotline, you, you told me my child was going to have problems health-wise. And two weeks after the reading, she nearly died of a whooping cough thing. And all the way through the reading, all the way through the, the illness, I kept thinking about what the psychic had said, and it got me through. All and that's right. important. All right. Something. Well, coming up, coming up, we'll find out what psychic Simon Turnbull has to say about uh, Annie's future, plus more of a chat to uh, Simon Reynolds about his psychic future. <laughs> During the break, we had uh, James Wainless, our tarot card expert, read our guest Simon Reynolds' cards. Now, James, what have the cards told you about Simon's future? Well, we asked specifically about his future regarding career. And he probably, well, got the hottest entrepreneur card in the deck, which is the, <laughs> the Ten of Worlds reward. It's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that comes with his assertiveness and his ability to take risks. Whoa, what do you think of that, Simon? <laughs> well, it sounds pretty good, absolutely. <laughs> is that money? The big money. My buddy. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, the last time we saw a psychic Simon Turnbull, he was tuning into Annie's emotions. Now, what sort of person is Annie, and what did you see in her future? All right. I saw uh, a, a new relationship around her, which, um, uh, I mean, it was a good person, but I also saw a problem going back further in the past, and you've always got to establish the past thing first, um, to do with a prior relationship where she had, which she hadn't quite got over. And of course, when you go from one relationship to a new thing, and if you're not resolved with the old relationship, mm -hmm. then of course the new one suffers. However, it did look positive for the short term, but career-wise, she's got a major choice. And uh, that's, uh, we talked about that in terms of uh, this month, actually. Oh. Major thing. How right. It's that? all been spot on, especially the job opportunity and the traveling. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, now could the mere fact that Simon has told Annie that she's got this job opportunity, could that all make her achieve that? It certainly could. It, it uh, may help her focus on the positives, uh, positive thoughts, positive actions and behaviours towards what she's doing. And people tend to write what we call a positive life script, as if they were writing out a positive play, a script for a play for themselves. And she might then start to live that out a little more and, and become really quite positive and orientated towards those things mm. Simon was talking about. What if it had been bad? If it had been bad, then uh, there is a chance that she may have said, here's another failure or, or whatever. And, and again, then uh, she may have needed some other assistance in getting through that. And just quickly, what sh when shouldn't you go to see a psychic? If you've got an ongoing psychological disorder that uh, has been there for a long time, like a very deep depressive disorder, you certainly wouldn't just want to see a psychic. You'd want to seek other professional help at that time. All right, don't just rely on a psychic. Next, an experiment with Athena Starwoman's healing hands. Welcome back. I recently recorded this interview with Woman's Day magazine astrologer Athena Starwoman about her healing hands. Now recently you've been promoting your healing hands, mm -hmm. how does that work, just tell us. Well it was a very bold experiment in an Australian magazine called Woman's Day, um, which is a, a very well known magazine. They actually ran this uh, copy, the double mm -hmm. page copy, and it was my hands photographed when I was in a very uh, empowered state. And the readers were asked to put their hands on top of mine at certain hours of the day when I would be sending out the healing light 
the light of, of uh, healing. So we had incredible response to this. It was always regarded as an experiment, but one that worked. What, people got better and things like that? Yes, we had people cure themselves of very serious diseases. All right, well, maybe you could heal some of our viewers at home now. If you could hold your hands up to the camera. Mm -hmm. If you at home want to place your hands on the television screen over Athena's, mm -hmm. and Athena, just tell us that people have to concentrate on something like that. Well, I found with this type of work, if someone's very angry and resentful or upset about something, the healing energy can't reach them. It's like they have a barrier. So I do ask people to put themselves in a state of gratitude. That means thinking of someone you love, something you're really thankful about, an experience, even a pet, a sunset, whatever it is that you know opens your heart so that you can receive this energy. That really makes a difference. All right, so if you put your hands up now, people just, what, put their hands? They can put their hands on top of my hands. I'll have to go off now. I won't be able to talk anymore. Okay. I have to put myself in a state of gratitude and tune into the higher energy and okay. uh, try and put it down. Okay. Fine, or maybe people can write into us and tell us uh, if or what happened and I thank you very much Athena for that. I've can, got to, uh, can I just make one hmm. comment? Don't stop now. I will keep putting that energy out so if you want to just think of me I'll keep doing that after this program's finished at various times so they can keep tuning into it. Well psychologist Grant Brett, I'll bet you anything you like that a lot of people watching today are going to write in and say that they put their hands on Athena Starwoman's hands and hey presto their ailment was cured. But as she said, that's what happened in a previous experiment. How would you explain that? A couple of things are going on, uh, Trisha. In some instances, people would feel so helpless about their plight that after seeing that for a while, they would deny what was going on in their life and that, in fact, they did have uh, uh, whatever ailment it was. Other people would, uh, would feel very positive for a while and maybe distress themselves through that. And when we do that, our immune function seems to vamp up a bit and they might fight for a while some things that, uh, that, that are going on there. Uh, and other people would, uh, for a short period of time, cope quite well because, uh, again, they're looking for something, but uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, you'd find that this sort of thing just does reality. not hold up. No, reality comes around. Well, thanks, Grant. Thanks to all our psychic guests today. And, ooh, what's this I see about the future in my crystal ball? Ah, yes, we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Lynn uncovers a wilderness that's been recreated in the middle of a city, and Ian makes a healthy 90 salad dressing on Healthy, Wealthy and Wise, 7.30 tonight on 10. Next, Hogan's Heroes.